all righty what is going on ladies and gents welcome back to the channel for another market update hope everybody's having a lovely day and with that being said let's get into the ta all right guys so we're gonna start things off with the 15 minute time frame all right today's video will be a short video not much has changed since the previous video but i do think things are setting up in a certain manner so we're gonna go over the scenarios that i'm seeing here on these charts all right i'm gonna start off by saying all right there's no 15-minute bearish divergence on SPY or QQQ, which does lead me to believe we're going to be going up. We're going to take out this high, and we're going to put in that 15-minute bearish divergence. So you have no reason to get really bearish here, or not even, not really bearish. You, you have no reason to get bearish yet on these, all right? So there's that. But I will also come over here to Mr. Vix, and I'm going to point out that you have an hourly bullish divergence over here on the uh, one-hour RSI here. The last one you got, uh, you know, you did end up eventually having a spike up over there you have this one that led to this over there so they can lead to things just putting it on your radar that is there with spy now looking like this so what do i think is likely i think we're likely going to take out this high and then we're going to stall out somewhere up here maybe it comes all the way up to 516 which would be you know all the way up at the top of this trend line we are in a larger falling uh rising wedge pattern here you have a one touch point, you have a two. Are we gonna have a third over here? You have a one, you have a two. And if you come down here, you would have a third. And I do think it would be a false breakdown. Then we would go like that. All right, so that would be scenario number one. Both of these result in, I do think we're gonna end up having that pullback. I don't know where it comes from, but I do think we're gonna come up here and stall out here above. All right, so new high incoming at some point. Whether that comes from that and then that, or we just do this, which would be scenario number two. Now you do this, and then we still end up coming down here. So I do think we are going to be re revisiting 510.13, which would be the breakout level from right over here, the height of this candlestick. But I don't know which one of these two scenarios we're, we're going to get. What I do know is we don't have the 15-minute bearish divergence by QQQ, which does lead me to believe we are going to be taking out that high. So that's really you know all I have to say here on uh this 15 minute chart guys i'm looking for one of these two scenarios if you run up guys we're gonna have the divergent high you know uh don't expect too much out of this before your decent pullback there we do a pal speaking on wednesday testifying at 10 a.m so uh, 10 a.m eastern standard time so that could be something that is going to be bringing us in one direction or the other if we fall into that event expect to bounce if we don't fall into the event and we rally and we have a 15 minute bearish divergence on spine qq going into the event then guess what all right, we're going to be looking for that sell. But SPY is in this bull flag, bull pennant looking uh, you know, structure there. Whereas QQQ has the same thing going on here. You got this bull pennant slash falling wedge here. And uh, like I said on SPY, you don't have the 15 minute bearish divergence. So it does lead me to believe we're going to do this. And I'm just saying, I'm looking for 450, the 450 psych level over here on QQQ. So honestly, that would not be out of the picture for me. All right, I would be looking at this okay you're watching there that's your, your warning sign that if you get up there and you have this then yeah you're probably about to stall out up there all right or at least you're going to be looking for a pullback and from that point on guys we could come all the way back down to 440.59 which was the breakout level from all the way over here all right so you're going to have this demand zone so yeah that would be one nasty sell there probably scare the crap out of a lot of people and then we're just going to have to realize that hey if we do get that that'll just be a break and retest off of here so uh yeah all right, guys, that's pretty much everything I'm watching here on Spy and QQ. Let's come over here to IWM. I am going to point out, I do think we're going to be pushing all the way up here to uh, the 209 to 212 demand zone up there. It doesn't have to happen right away, but I was pretty clear in my weekly update. Guys, this is not a bearish look to me. It's not at all a bearish look. Look at this, how this weekly candles that closed. You closed at the exact high. Uh, not the exact high, but the high was 206.33. You close the 205.89, guys. That's within like 40 cents of the high, 45 cents of the high right there. All right. You have a big wide bodied green bar, increasing volume, breakout. Yeah, I think it's like we're going to push up to this next resistance. So I'm not necessarily bearish over here, but I will point out you are in this ascending channel here, this parallel channel. And if you want to get this parallel channel, all you have to do is this. You just go like that. You're going to hit. Uh, control and you're gonna go like that and now you have the channel that i'm watching all right easy as that I, I guess we could call it right there but if you want to include all the price action just like that and the upper bound of that would be with that supply zone so uh there would be that 
Okay, guys, now on to some individual tickers here. Actually, before we do that, I'm just going to point out, guys, DIA just had the weekly break and retest. I do think we're going to see more upside from here. Uh, I don't think we're just going to be stalling out here. Um, you know, we could get hammer candlestick before we fall down, like you got one right over here. But, you know, because this is a pretty bullish look. And, you know, you close out the week with a bullish candlestick last week. I'm not looking for... I'm looking for the hide to be taken out. I'm looking for this thing to continue. Uh, I was... You know, the same on all of these other ones. We had bullish candlesticks. So I'm looking for further upside. I don't know how much upside, but I'm looking for further upside. Now, individual tickers, guys. Right here, S&P 500 inclusion over here on SMCI. These are the extensions, the FIB extensions from this move all the way up to here. Now you're taking out that high. So we're going to be looking for over there. Just thought I would, uh, you know, point this out for anybody who's playing. Congrats if you did end up even buying next week's expiration. Looking at the 1500 strike for next next Friday. And uh, yeah, holy cow. I did not buy that off open. Got distracted. And uh, this thing went bananas. They went bananas. So congrats to anybody who did end up playing that. You do have a fresh breakout on the day. You are getting glued in the S&P 500. Um, yeah, I think you're going to continue to see buyers sh uh, show up here. I think 1250 is next. All right. So that's what we're watching over there in Apple. Or not, not, not an Apple over there on SMCI. Apple, guys, you have your daily RSI sitting down here over at 27. All right, dip buyers, this is your opportunity. This is your chance, okay? Uh, now, you are oversold here on the daily time frame. You're down here coming down to support, which also aligns with the 0.786 FIB. Guys, between 173 and 178.60, I thought buyers were going to step in. I still think that is going to be the case. All right. I, I do think downside is limited over here on Apple. I think the gold pocket is the perfect spot for buyers to step in. I think a lot of people are still bearish on this thing as it's oversold. And I, yeah. All right. Uh, your puts could have paid from coming down here. But, you know, if you're buying weeks out and you're really trying to catch the next big move, I don't think this was it. I think this was, you know, I think it was that. And then they do that. I, nothing has changed in this Apple chart, guys, other than now you've done what we have talked about, all right? Your worst-case scenario, your daily RSI is all the way down underneath 30. It's at 27, all right? Over here, guys, it reached 28, 28.79, so just about 29, and that is where you bottomed, okay? Over here, you did reach 27, so right where you are. Guess what? You fell the next day, $1.50, and then you rallied from there. You know, this is the big boy Apple, and if Apple's still looking like this, I don't think you're going to get a massive sell from here, which means, you know, sooner rather than later, you're going to have Apple supporting the market. So that is just something to keep in the back of your mind. But regardless, dip buyers, here you are, all right? Here's the opportunity. If you, if you, you know, are that long-term investor, you want to not have stress in the positions you were taking, here is your perfect buy-in on Apple. I got you. All right. Why am I saying that? Just because you can go back, all right? And you can see, this is where Apple, you know, this R side will bottom out. And typically that will correlate with price bottoming out, all right? Go back, go back to the COVID crash, 30, 60 days out. You are, you know, you're not gonna find a, an instance where you did not get a pop. There you go. And I do think it's gonna be a decent pop. There you go. So when we're going to talk about Avgo, guys, you do have earnings. Now, I will just say, I think this thing is actually set up to sell on this. I'm not saying it sells. It could just trade flat, but I am definitely going to lean that way right now because of how this looks, guys. You've rallied your butt off into earnings. You have earnings going on on Thursday. If you consolidate just up here, all right, um, you know, that that could not be the best going into earnings. Like, just Let's just use our heads here. What makes sense, guys? You, well, you had a break and retest right here. It made sense that you found buyers stepping in. Well, now we're up here in no man's land right before earnings, the big event. And uh, yeah. All right. So just uh, something to uh, think about. There you go. All right. BA. I know. Long time no see. BA, guys. You are finding buyers stepping in right here at the bottom of the golden pocket, the 0.786 FIB, which aligns with this breakout level from over there. Also lines with the support. That's where you found Byron stepping in last time. And it's the bottom of this falling wedge. Okay. Uh, you have a lot of confluence going on there. You still have held your daily bullish divergence. I uh, do think, you know, it is likely that you, I, I thought when we were down here, I told the discord, I thought, hey, all right, long-term people. This is, uh, this is where if you wanted to take your shot on the long side, it was right here. 
because you're right here at the bottom of the golden pocket. You have your support, bottom of the falling wedge. You got your daily bullish divergence going on. And uh, yeah, all right, that's that. Zom, here on the weekly chart, guys, we did get a breakout. So is this going to be the entry? All right, only time will tell if this is going to be the break and retest entry right there. I do think it is going to serve as a valid entry. All right, so just uh, it's something I thought I'd put out there. Next one I'm talking about is the beast itself, NVIDIA. All right, congrats if anybody did end up taking NVIDIA today. All right, this was one of the layups of the week. We had another layup of the week. We're going to talk about it right now. Uh, NVIDIA, to 900 bucks, guys. That is what I think is incoming. Congrats if anybody has, uh, you know, held calls throughout this breakout. There you go. IBM, this was also, this was the other layup of the week, guys. This thing does look like it is about to uh, push up to 196.90, and then I do think the $200 psych level will be hit after that. All right, so just something to, uh, you know, something to uh, put on your radar. If you played it, congratulations. Pullbacks are buying opportunities. If we were to pull back to 190, I'd be interested in that dip. All right, last one I am going to talk about, guys, Pan W. I am interested in buying this dip, all right? Uh, I don't know if you are, you know, it's the bottom of the dip right here today. We'll tell you right now, all right, you go back and every time you've gotten these big, uh, you know, these pullbacks here, they have been your buying opportunities, your long-term buying opportunities. And um, yeah, this was a pretty dramatic sell here. I, I do think this high right here is going to be taken out. We're going to start pushing back up. Regardless, you found buyers on your trend line. If you were to come all the way back down here to what we're going to call it 270 to 280, that is where uh, I do think buyers will probably step in again. There's that. All right, guys. So that is what I have for you today. Nice, sweet, short video to the point video. And uh, yeah, I'm bullish, guys. I'm looking for a new high here on SPY. I'm looking for a new high over there on QQQ. Without that, I'm definitely not looking for a sell. We are in bull flags, bull pennants over here on uh, SPY and QQQ. I think we're going to go up and take out those highs. Okay, guys. That's what I got for you today. With that being said, everybody have a lovely rest of your day. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. And peace.